My name is Donna Landsman, and I am the creative arts teacher at Keswick Multi Care Center, and I'm also a potter. All the pottery that you see in the art room at Keswick, I make here in my home studio. And there are two basic forms for making pots on the potter's wheel. One is the cylinder where you make all vertical forms like pitchers and vases and mugs. And the other form are bowl forms where you make bowls and plates and low round things. Today I'm gonna to show you how the simple cylinder can be transformed into a variety of shapes. And I'm gonna be doing that by demonstrating and explaining how to make just a mug. So here we go. So here we go. We've got a bunch of different mugs. These are all made by different artists, different potters, but they're all made starting with the cylinder. And you can see they look completely different from each other. They're done with different clays. They are done with different glazes and different firing techniques. Uh, so they, all that makes a difference, all that makes them unique. I just want you to take a look at the basic shapes and you can see how varied they are. And that is all done with the same technique I'm going to show you right now, which is going to be throwing on the wheel a cylinder. Okay, so my first step in preparing the clay for the wheel, this is how my clay comes. It comes in about a 25 pound bag, it's not about, it is 25 pound bag of clay. It's a solid block and I cut out pieces that I need and when I'm making um, a mug, I generally use about a pound and a quarter. I make a generous sized uh, mug. And the first thing I'm gonna do is called wedging and that's getting the clay into condition. It's getting any air bubbles that are in, the clay out. You don't want air bubbles in your clay. Um, you also, if you've reused clay, so let's say I've made a pot that I didn't like and I'm going to reuse the clay. I'm not going to keep that pot. It's a nice thing about clay is you can reuse it, but the clay get, the particles in the clay get all wonky and by wedging you're lining all those particles back up and making it uh, easier to use and on the wheel. So I'm doing what's called a spiral wedge. There's different ways to wedge, but this is a spiral. And I am gonna, it's not kind of, you know, everybody thinks it's like kneading bread, but kneading bread, it doesn't matter if you're getting air in there, you don't want air in your clay. So that's what a wedge piece, a spiral clay. So we've got three pieces of clay and I'm gonna go take it over to the wheel and I'm gonna show you how to center the clay. That's the next step. Okay, so here I am at my wheel. And here is the first step we're gonna do once you're on the wheel, it's called centering. And centering means getting the clay exactly in the perfectly round, right in the middle of the wheel. The wheel goes round, the clay goes round, so you need it to be right there in the center. If it's a little off, you can make a pot, but it's pretty wonky and it makes it really difficult for anything you wanna do. So you wanna work on getting the clay right in the middle. And what that means is once I turn on the wheel, I'm gonna be putting one hand on the side and one hand on top. You wanna to kinda of have even pressure in and down to force that clay right into the center of the wheel head. Um, it takes practice. You know, anything with clay takes practice. That's all that's there is to it. Once you conquer centering, which can be hard for people to get, but once with practice you get it and you get the feel for it, you're golden. I'm gonna turn on my wheel. My wheel is a very old wheel. It's a converted kick wheel, kind of sort. It's got a big fly wheel in it. So it's got this big um, wheel at the bottom that's made out of cement and metal. It's very heavy. And I have kind of like an outboard motor on it that's got a pedal. I press down the pedal and it makes the wheel go around so it's loud. So I'm gonna, that's why I'm talking to you first because once I turn it on, you may not hear a word that I'm saying, okay? So I'm gonna, some of the tools that I'm using, I'm using just a sponge. This is, uh, I call it a 45 tool, it's a wood tool and it's used just kind of for finishing some things like getting the edges up, I'll show you that on the bottom or to cutting off excess clay. Um, I have a rib, that's a shaper. They come in all different kinds of shapes and sizes. Um, a needle tool, which kind of you use like a knife when the wheel is going around. And then this is a wire uh, that just cuts the clay off of the wheel head. So I am gonna turn on the wheel right now. We'll see how this goes. And we're gonna hope for the best. All right, let me turn. I have to, it's like I'm sitting on top of a tractor. I have to use, I can't reach the button to turn on the wheel. I have to use this gizmo here. Alrighty, here we go. Wish us luck. There we are. Okay. 
So I haven't been on the wheel for a while, so we're gonna hope this goes well. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of moisture on the wheel head and I'm gonna slam down my clay. And here we go. it up I kind of squeeze in and up to try to force it into the center and then I'm bringing it back down and I'm looking at you guys because I'm using you as a mirror I throw with a mirror so I can see what I'm doing but um, you are right now my mirror so you can see I've got one hand on the side and I've also got this hand on the top and I'm just forcing that clay to go right in the middle. I use a lot of water when I'm first doing this because it takes a lot of friction. Later on, I won't use as much water because water will um, weaken clay. So you certainly don't want that to happen. So that's pretty good. I'll just do one more quick one. All right. I think we're pretty well centered here. So I'm gonna, my first, mug I'm going to make is the shape that I generally have at the senior center that the residents tend to like. So I now I'm going to open the clay. So you can see I have one hand on the side and I'm going straight down. I'm digging a hole down to the center. I'm going to leave like a quarter of an inch of clay at the bottom. You don't want too much clay at the bottom. You don't want too little. And I tend to, I tend to go too thin sometimes. All right. And now I'm going to make a groove here. So I've got a flat bottom on the inside. So it's kind of like, so when you're doing a cylinder, if you're doing a bowl, you want a nice curve because bowls are curved and it makes it nice for the spoon or the fork, whatever you're using. But for a cylinder, you want a flat bottom and straight walls. Okay, so that's what I've got my flat bottom there. And now I'm gonna make a groove here to help me get my fingers in there. So right at the bottom of the clay. And right now I'm gonna use a little less, I'm gonna use less water. And so I've got my fingers on the inside, fingers of this hand, and right now I'm gonna use my thumb on the outside because I can reach it. But generally, you're gonna have your hands together. You always work with your hands together. I've got my fingers curved, and I'm slowly gonna, you should see a ridge of clay coming up. I made that wedge there. My fingers can fit in there. And you should see a wedge of clay coming up, bringing those walls up. So that clay that was on my fingers at the bottom helped that clay come up and get taller. I'm going to do another one, another pool. You can also see it kind of have this shape like this. So like a silo, that is the strongest shape for a cylinder. So once I've got it pulled as much as I want, I want to have the walls as thin as I, as I want them to be, then you can change the shape. If I make my cylinder starting like this with wet clay and gravity, you're not going to get it back up. So you want to start this, then you can shape your clay and stretch it however you want. All right, so you can see I'm putting water on my hands, but not all over the clay. And I also throw with a sponge because that keeps the clay consistently moist without me having to douse it. Because that I do not want to do at this point. So can you see that ridge of clay coming up? That's all coming from the bottom. You see how much taller it gets? And it's all from like a pound and a quarter of clay. So it, you know I'm thinning out those walls. So I just took off another groove of clay down at the bottom. My hand. So when I get in here, I gotta keep that inside hand really steady and still. You don't wanna be all wibbly wobbly. You can see I keep one arm, I keep the inside hand really steady and still and my outside arm right into my body because you're gonna have more strength doing that. All right, so I'm not gonna bring it up anymore. That's plenty thin. So this is also another rib. This is a bigger rib, um, but it does the same thing. So I want this to be pretty straight, but I also want it to flare out a little bit. I want it to be more like a V. So I'm gonna take this rib and I'm holding it at an angle towards me, just that edge against that clay, 
and uh, my inside hand is slowly and gently, and you'll notice I didn't use any water, pushing that clay against the edge of that rib. And it's starting to change the shape. I'm gonna clean that off. Be careful when you clean off a metal rib. It is sharp, sharp, sharp. But, all right, I'm gonna stretch it a little bit. I'm gonna use a shorter guy now. All right, I'm gonna go back in here. Just speeding it up. I speed that up a lot. But I wanna go a little bit wider as I come up. You guys are a really good mirror and I appreciate the help. All right. Let me come back out here again. I'm just gonna even this up. This guy's just about done. I'm gonna show you what I do on the bottom. It's a different kind of finishing technique. There we go. I'm gonna leave it like that. So there's some water sitting in the side of the pot. I wanna get that water out because if you leave water in your clay, it'll cause cracking. It kind of erodes just like it's how the Grand Canyon was formed. I tell my students all the time, get the water out. All right, so I've got my sponge. I squeezed out all the water, I'm just holding it at the bottom of my pot. I'm getting that puddle out. I have a bucket of water over here you can't see. All right. I'm hoping I didn't go too deep in here. We'll see. All right, and then I'm also going to just ride that around my rim a little bit. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna take this wood tool, call it the 45. I don't know if you can see, I've got a, a little bit of clay down here at the bottom. I wonder if I need to bring this closer for you guys. And I'm gonna take the tip of this tool and bring it right underneath that clay and digging right into the bottom of the pot. So can you see how it has come up a bit? And I'm gonna take my sponge and make a bottom. So you have a nice finishing touch on the bottom of your pot. So I'm just gonna clean up my hands a bit and I'm gonna take cut this pot off the wheel. And then I'll make another one a different shape. Yep, I went right through my bottom. But we're gonna leave it be, because I just, uh, we're just gonna do it. I'll move on to the next one. All right, let me get this guy. I do this all the time, I make it too. So I've been making pots for many, many a year and I still do things that are irritating. That's when you, uh, I said you recycle your clay, that's when you're gonna recycle your clay. Okay, so let me put this back up here. And now I'm just gonna recenter another piece of clay and I'll make another shape. There we go. I didn't go too deep. Lordy, I don't think I did. I'm gonna make this one a little bit, I think a curvy, a curvy mug is my hope. Pulling it up into that silo. So you can see I'm doing the same technique as I did before. Do one more pull, and then I'm gonna shape it.
Okay. So now I wanna straighten. You see how these are these are called finger finger marks? It's fine. They're throwing marks, but I want to have a smooth surface. So if I want to paint on here or do any carving or anything like that, you want a nice. Uh, smooth surface, but throwing rings can be really nice depending on what you're doing with the surface of your clay. If you want to uh, have a glaze that can catch in there and do some interesting things, catch in those rings, it can be nice to leave the rings. But I'm going to get them out. And I'm just using my rib, holding it up against the side, and it smooths it out. All right, so now I'm going to shape. So I'm going to belly out the pot. Hopefully, I'm going to belly out the bottom, like the bottom two thirds. So with that, I'm going to curve. This rib is made out of a thin metal, so it's uh, nice and bendable. So I'm using my finger from the inside, pushing it against the curve of the rib. The rib says I want it to go this way, and the finger says, okay, I'll follow you. You see it's starting to spread out a bit. Let me do it again. So if I'm kind of doing this motion, I'm doing the curve, the rib is showing the curve that I want the pot to go in. And you do this slowly because the clay is wet and thin and wet clay and gravity again, they don't like each other. Okay, I'm going to do it again. So you can stretch it as much as you want. There will be a point where uh, the clay says, I don't think so, uh, but I think we're okay for right now. And I'm using the edge of that rib. And do you see I'm like I'm forming a defining line? You can do that, you don't have to. But it kind of says, okay, here's the neck of my, of my mug. So it's all personal taste. This is where the art part comes in. So the technique is making the cylinder. The art part is what you want your pot to look like, aesthetically. Pull it out a little bit. Okay. See the change in the shape there? Then I'm gonna take this side of the rib just curve it a little bit in the other direction. Just put a little lip on there. It'll sit nicely on the bottom lip of whoever's drinking this. Help direct the pour. Okay, I'm gonna get that water out from inside. Carefully, I'm gonna stretch my pot. Okay, a little bit more. And if I cut this off the wheel, Shame on me. I made that bottom too thin again. All right. Let's see what we got going on here. All right, I just want to fix that up. Now, another thing I'm going to do, I can do with this wood tool, is you see all this clay down here? I don't need all that, and I want this shape to go in more. I can trim it later, or I can trim it now. And I'm going to trim it now a bit. We'll see how this goes. Okay, so you can see that wedge of clay that I just took off. That was a lot of excess clay. Take my needle tool, cut underneath it. And I can cut that way. It's very satisfying to pull off that wedge of clay. You see how much that changed? Just taking that excess clay off the bottom, it made it less chunky and bunky down there which is a new term, chunky and bunky, but you get what I'm saying. All right, let me take my rib and clean that up a bit. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in with my wood tool, and I'm just gonna take the tip there, and I'm just gonna make a little groove under there, just to give the pot a little shadow line. Makes it look a little bit more elegant when it's on the table. All right. And I am going to now cut this off the wheel. So I'm using my wire. Please don't make it too thin. I did it again, people. I did it again. All right, one more is gonna be the charm. Jeez Louise. Okay, Let's see what we can do. So 
is what happens when you don't practice on the wheel for a long time. Fine team will do that. Okay. Once more is the charm, but mainly I want you to see the shapes, okay? So that's one, let me see. Maybe I'll do one that's more rounded, like a cafe au lait, see how that goes. Okay, let's give it a try. there. Now again, just know if you guys decide to take a class, a wheel class, just know that it takes a while to do this, okay? All right. I'm going to bring this guy out here, making my floor. Holy guacamole, let's see what I did here. This time I'm gonna test it and see how thick my floor is. I'm gonna take my needle tool. I'm gonna to go down, oh, I think it's thin. All right, we may start this whole thing over again, but we'll see, we'll see how this does. Because Jiminy Crickets, okay. So I'm gonna pull up those needles. Make them a groove. Now this one, I'm making it a little bit wider because I'm going to do more of an open bowl kind of shape, cafe au lait kind of shape. So you could have it a straight mug. That looks more like a, a diner mug, doesn't it? you can tell this is a lot wider than the last two. Okay. One more pull. And I'm really going to widen it out now. I'm going to use more pressure with my inside hand like I was doing with the rib. So I'm stretching the clay from the inside now and that's widening it some. Now I'm going to take my rib and I'm going to have it curved and I'm going to go out to the right of me and hands on the inside and as soon as I can get those fingers together, the inside hand and the outside hand, I always try my best to work with two hands together. You're going to be much steadier if your hands are working together. Now I'm going to get a different kind of rib. This is a wood rib, and I use this more for my bowl shape, so I want to get this nice curve going out, because I'm going to make this more like a cafe au lait. I really do think I made that inside too thin again. Jeez Louise. Okay, so now I'm going to use that rib and that curve from that rib. I'm using the rib on the outside to catch it. You see how that moved? a little bit more. I'm looking at you guys to see what I got going on here. All right. There we go. You see the shape changing? All right, that is going to be a huge mug. Okay, I'm going to give it a little bit of a lip out rather than in. So I'm taking my finger I've got one finger on the outside, a little bit lower than the rim, and I've got my finger on the inside, 
higher up and I'm pushing that clay out just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a, of a lip there, a lip to sit on the lip. Okay, and I'm gonna round that off a little bit. And I am going to get out my water from the inside. I really do think I went too, too deep again. Jamie crickets. Okay, take this. I'm going to cut off my excess clay at the bottom. Get my needle. Cut off that wedge. Okay. This one I might trim up a little bit more later, but we'll see. For right now, it might be okay. Let me go in there and get a nice shadow line. And cut it off. We'll see. True test. Did I do it again? So close, but it lives. Okay. really dry hands. Okay, so these are the three shapes that I made. And of course, uh, two have bad bottoms. I'll remake those. Um, but I wanted to show you that I've got three different shapes from the same amount of clay um, and starting with the same way, the same cylinder. And when these clays get a little bit hardened, um, not very, very hard, but a little bit harder, I'm going to put a handle and I will show you how to put a handle on them. Okay? All right. See you soon. Okay, so here I am um, with our pot that is called Leather Hard. It's still wet, but it's dry enough that it can hold its own shape. And so if I handle it, I'm not gonna destroy it. So, you know, when I was making the pots, that clay was really wet. And so if I had touched the clay, it would have just smushed up. So right now it's holding its own shape, but it's still damp enough that I can attach another piece of clay to it, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to attach a handle. I'm going to do what's called pulling a handle from the pot. I'm going to start off with this lug of clay, this little piece of clay that I formed kind of into a carrot shape. Do you see how it's, I'll put it this way. It's tapered that way. And then I've kind of softened the edges here. So it's kind of like a soft diamond shape. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to flatten that bit a little bit, that top part, because that's where I'm going to attach to the pot and I want to have good surface area. And then I'm going to take this serrated rib, I don't know if you can see it's got those little edges there, and I'm just going to comb through and rough up the surface here. Because um, when you attach clay, it's kind of like when you put a wood screw in a wall, you want to have those grooves so it'll really grip. And I'm going to put my handle right about here. You kind of decide, you look at your pot and you decide where is the best place to put my handle and I'm gonna put this right here. So I always score both spots where it's gonna attach. And then I'm gonna take my brush and I've got my little bucket of water here, which you can't see. But down at the bottom of that, where I had all my water because I was using my dirty hands in there, you get what's called like a slip. It's like a slurry of clay and water and it makes like a glue and I'm just painting it right on there. It's a little gooey. And I'm now going to attach my, the spot that I just flattened and scored. You see I'm trying to attach that pretty well. So I kind of have it really in there and I'm going to take, this is like a, it's just like a what do you call it, like a kebab thing for the, for the grill, like a wood skewer. And I'm just kind of rolling that base of clay into the pot. So I'm making sure that the pot is secured, that, that, that the bottom of the handle is really melding on there. So now I've got this on here. 
and I'm gonna take a damp sponge and I'm just gonna clean this up. So you can't tell, it looks like it's growing right out of the pot. Right now it looks like a big nose. Here we go. Okay, so you can see it's all attached and now this is when I'm gonna take my water this is the part where people go, oh lordy, what is she doing? So I've got this attached, I've got my pot upside down, and this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start pulling the handle. So I'm using a really wet hand, and I'm just sliding even pressure. I'm sliding my hand down that nose, that lug of clay, and you'll see it's starting to stretch out. It's starting to get longer. And I have my pot kind of upside down because I want gravity to help me. I want my um, handle to kind of have the shape of an ear. Think of the shape of an ear against the side of a mug. It kind of has a little lift to it at the top, so it's a place to comfortably put your, put your fingers. So let me see here. Can you see how that's thinned out and has gotten longer? And so now what I'm going to do is, I think that's probably long enough, I'm gonna turn my pot right side up. You see how I get that little lift? And that's where my handle's gonna be. Now I could attach it just like that, but for all I know, it's off to the side. So I take a look and see where I want to attach it, but then I'm gonna turn it. So I am lining it right up. And let me, what did I do with my rib? There it is. I'm now gonna score at the bottom where I wanna attach it. So I'm scoring at the very bottom of my pot. I don't know if you can see that. I've lined it up there. I'm just gonna put, line up my handle and I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna smooth there, smooth there, and I can take that right off, that little excess clay. You can do lots of things with handles if you want. You can add doohickeys to the top. You can roll out a coil, just a rope of clay and use that to make a handle. You could roll out just a flat pancake of clay and cut out the piece that you want to be the handle. You can make the handles you know, shorter so it's just two fingers. I tend to like it with more fingers. So there you have a completed pot. I will do um, our other two pots really quick, but um, this is basically the handle I'm gonna show you today. There's just too many different ways to show you in one sitting. I'll just do these really fast. And otherwise, that's how you make a mug. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe we'll do some more another time. Talk to you soon.